I'm starting recording now. So to go over the agenda tonight, um, the goal of tonight is that we want to give you updates and information about the cleanup work. And so we'll be having a slide presentation about that. And even more importantly is answer questions about the cleanup that you may have. So I'll go ahead and go through introductions of who are going to be the presenters um, tonight and who are the subject matter experts and the staff who are here um, attending. So first, we're going to have a brief overview about the site um, given by James, who is the remedial project manager for the, the cleanup. And then he'll be talking about some of the upcoming work that's happening at Palermo. Then Stephen Lucas, who is also remedial project manager um, at EPA, he'll be going over the five-year review process that's currently in way for Palermo. And then it'll go back to James, um, who will give um, timelines for the cleanup. And he and uh, Laura, uh, Lindy, who's with GeoEngineers, will um, talk about that upcoming work. And then I'll talk um, briefly about the community involvement plan that I am working on for the site. And then we'll go through some questions and answers, and then we'll wrap it up from there. So that's how things will be going tonight. So to let you know who you're going to be hearing from tonight, um, you'll be hearing from James first, who is a remedial project manager in the Seattle office here in EPA Region 10. And that's the same with um, Stephen Lucas, who is also a remedial project manager here in the Seattle office. And we have Laura, Lin uh, Laura Lindy, who's a project manager with GeoEngineers. And then myself, my name is Julie Congdon, and I'm a community involvement coordinator here in the EPA Region 10 Seattle office. And I'm the um, CIC, as we say community involvement coordinator for short for the Palermo cleanup. Some of the subject matter experts that we have attending tonight, they're here just on hand listening in. Um, they're available to answer any specific questions that might pop up that you have about the cleanup. And we have Elizabeth Allen, who is a human health risk assessor and regional toxicologist in the EPA Seattle office. We also have Tim Maley, who is a hydrologist here in the Seattle office. We have Norm Payton, who is an environmental policy manager with um, Washington Department of Intr Transportation. Uh, we have John Pierch, who is a hydrogeologist and cleanup site manager with Ecology, along with um, Andrew Smith, uh, who does underground, underground storage tanks, and he's a technical support unit there in Ecology. And we also have Dan Smith, who is with the City of Tumwater for Water Resources and Sustainability. So from there, I will turn it over to you, James. Uh, thanks, Julie. Uh, so, so tonight we are going to talk a little bit about the Palermo Superfund site. The reason we wanted to have this meeting is that there is um, a lot of work that's been done over the past couple of years since we've had our last public meeting, and because we have a lot of upcoming work on the site, and we wanted to make sure that we are informing the community about uh, about what that work is. Um, uh, can we go to the next slide, please? So a little bit of background on the site. Uh, the site is managed under CERCLA, which is also known as Superfund. That's a federal cleanup program for sites that um, are evaluated for the national priorities list, which means that it was determined to be a, a cleanup site that rises to a certain level uh, of risk for uh, human health and the environment. At this site, uh, we have uh, TCE and PCE releases up gradient to the west of the Palermo well field. Uh, these are commercial and industrial chlorinated solvents. They were first detected in 1993, and the site was listed on the national priorities list in 1997. Uh, these uh, contaminants were initially found in the drinking water wells at the, uh, for, for the uh, city of Tumwater. And when it was detected, uh, and they test them frequently, so when they were detected, those wells that it was detected in were shut off until a treatment system could be put in place for that drinking water. Um, we have soil and groundwater contamination at the site and the potential for vapor intrusion into buildings and homes. Uh, currently, the site has two operational units. It has OU1, which the contaminant of concern is TCE, trichloroethylene, and the source for that TCE are wash dot facilities. Uh, I should clarify that they're not currently releasing these uh, contaminants, it's their historic releases. And there's operable unit two, which 
has a contaminant of concern of PCE, which came from the Southgate dry cleaners. Again, it's a historic release, not a, not a current release. Um, previously, and this is a change from probably the last public meeting, there was only one operational unit on this site. However, this year we've split the site into two operational units so that we can manage the work moving forward in a uh, more timely manner since the PCE plume is much smaller than the TCE plume, which makes it a little bit more complicated to address. Can we have the next slide, please? So where are we at in the uh, Superfund circular process? The site uh, progressed from the discovery through the site assessment and listing, which occurred in, the 19, in 1997. And from there, a remedial investigation and feasibility study were conducted and a proposed cleanup plan was issued. And after the uh, public was able to comment on the plan, a final cleanup plan was, was issued. That's called a record of decision. That was issued in 1999. And then the site cleanup was uh, implemented. And that initial site cleanup included some technologies we'll talk about on the next slide, but it was was really the um, air stripping towers, which clean the drinking water and a sub drain to lower the uh, water level, the groundwater levels in the Palermo neighborhood and an SVE system to address the source material at the dry cleaners. After those remedies were implemented, uh, we entered an operations and maintenance phase, which is where those remedies are, are you know, operated and maintained so that we can see how effective they are on the site. Once we start the operation and maintenance phase, five-year reviews are conducted. So every five years, a review will be conducted on the site to make sure that those remedies are operating as intended. And ideally, after the five-year reviews have been completed and the site has been cleaned up, we get to NPL deletion. Currently, we are at the cleanup of the site phase. And because of our five-year reviews, we know that the site remedies may not be operating as optimally as we would like. And so we are now moving back to the RI invest, you know, remedial investigation and feasibility phase so that we can look at implementing additional remedies to reach the uh, desired cleanup levels. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So this is a map that sort of shows where the site is. Um, the furthest to the west, we can see the current uh, wash dot materials testing lab and the former wash dot materials testing lab. The former lab no longer exists. The current lab is still, uh, still present and operating. Uh, as we move across I-5, we have the, the Southgate Mall, which is where the Southgate dry cleaners was, and that was the source of the PCE release. And as we move uh, further to the west, or to the east, I'm sorry, we have a bluff that separates the upland uh, commercial industrial areas, like commercial industrial areas from the Palermo neighborhood and the Palermo well field. And uh, so that's highlighted here in yellow and in um, blue. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? So this figure shows sort of the plume of PCE and TCE. The uh, shaded area indicates where we know we have detections over the maximum contaminant level for groundwater, which is five micrograms per liter. The groundwater, the, the contamination moves from the sources and it moves to the northwest, northeast into the Palermo neighborhood and then is captured by the Palermo well field. Because the well field produces so much drinking water, it draws that contamination in. The good news is, is that the levels are very low, typically right around the MCL, and we have a very effective treatment system in place at that well field. There's also the subdrain that I talked about a little bit earlier that runs along the, um, the western side of the neighborhood. And the purpose of that uh, subdrain is to lower the groundwater levels, which surface, groundwater used to surface right at the base of the bluff, and we still occasionally have seeps at, at the base of the bluff. So the subdrain is designed to lower the groundwater levels and hopefully decrease uh, risk from vapor intrusion. That water is then redirected into a treatment lagoon that is to the northeast of the neighborhood. Um, 
if we can go to the next slide, please. This is a, uh, a figure from our conceptual site model. It shows how the contamination is uh, present at the site. And so we can see the source area of the TCE plumes to the west, and that moves across the site. The area where we have the gap is where I-5 crosses the site. And so there's, there's a data gap there where we can't quite confirm the presence, but we know that it continues on further and then moves down into the neighborhood and then is uh, slowly captured by the well field. You can see the smaller uh, PCE plume in, uh, in green. Uh, I'm slightly colorblind, so I may get the colors a little bit wrong, but I believe it's green and it moves into the, uh, the, towards the bluff. And the PCE plume is currently captured by the subdrain and then treated in the treatment lagoon. Um, we do have some groundwater seeps uh, present, and we have uh, the potential for vapor intrusion into the Palermo neighborhood. We currently are testing the groundwater on a biannual basis. So twice a year, we test the groundwater well so that we can measure the contaminants and try and understand how it's moving across the site. And every nine months, we collect uh, vapor samples from inside the homes in the Palermo neighborhoods from uh, the community members who are willing to let us. We would like to ask that uh, if you're willing to participate in that, we, we appreciate it. It helps us understand what contaminants and risk there is at the site. It helps us um, understand you know, what remedies might be needed and effective at the site. It's free and it's confidential, and it's uh, there for the neighborhood to, you know, to help make it safe and get it an effective cleanup. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So this slide shows our current remedy. Uh, we have the air stripping towers uh, at the at the well at the well field. Uh, this remedy works by pumping the groundwater to the top of these towers where it is then cascaded down through the towers and the uh, TCE, which is very volatile, comes out of the water. We also have the treatment lagoon, which is where the subdrain water is discharged. And it is also treated by aeration, as you can see in the photo. Um, previously, there was an SVE system that was installed at the S Southgate Mall. Uh, that SVE system or soil vapor extraction system worked very well, but it was run for a short time. It was turned off in 2001. And based on the current sampling, it, it appears that uh, it may have been turned off a little early. And so we're evaluating a pilot test uh, to test a new horizontal well technology there. And we will likely uh, turn an SVE system back on in that area to help uh, mitigate um, the soil vapor and test the new uh, extraction wells. Uh, okay, if we can have the next slide, thank you. And so for our upcoming work, uh, we are currently working on our fifth five-year review. That's ongoing, and Stephen's going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, we are also working on the supplemental remedial investigations and focused feasibility studies for both OU1 and OU2. And Julie is working on updating our community involvement plan so that we can understand the best way to communicate with the community. Next slide, please. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Stephen to talk about our uh, fifth five-year review. Thanks, James. Uh, so as James has mentioned, the site is currently undergoing the fifth uh, five-year review. The uh, most recent review was completed uh, in 2018, and we are targeting September 2023 uh, for the final uh, five-year review report uh, date. So what exactly is a five-year review? Why does EPA do that? Um, well, Superfund regulations state that if contaminants remain at the site above levels that allow for unlimited use and unrestricted exposure, um, that the agency should conduct these reviews no less than every five years um, after the initiation of the selected remedial action. Um, and what we're doing during these reviews is we're evaluating uh, the implementation and performance of the remedy, and we're determining uh, whether or not the remedy is protective of the site. 
Next slide. Um, so a couple of the things that are going into this process. Um, you know, one of the most important pieces um, is looking at and answering the, the following questions. Um, so one, is the remedy functioning as intended by the original decision? Uh, two, are the exposure assumptions, toxicity data, cleanup levels, and remedial action objectives used at the time of the remedy still valid? And three, has any other information come to light that could call into question the protectiveness of the remedy? Um, and in, in that process, we are uh, inspecting the site, we're conducting interviews with community members, um, and importantly, we're looking at data that's been collected within the uh, five-year time span uh, from 2018 to 2023. Um, as James has mentioned, there's been uh, some work done at the site since the last five-year review, uh, and that data um, that's validated and, and ready for reporting is being analyzed during this period. Uh, we conducted the site inspections and interviews uh, this past spring. Uh, right now, the draft we have a draft report in hand under review, and we're looking for a final report to be released um, to the public this September. Next slide. Uh, okay, yeah, I, that's it uh, from the, the five-year review part. Thanks. Uh, James, I think over to you on timelines for the cleanups and operable units one and two. Sure. Thanks, Stephen. So we've conducted these five-year reviews, and now we are, uh, we've determined that an additional remedy may be appropriate. And so now we are working on the next steps of that process. So we're back at the um, remedial in investigation and feasibility state uh, study stage. And uh, in the past, uh, in, from, from the previous five-year review, um, a lot of work has been done uh, to eliminate data gaps at the site and to better understand what is going on at the site uh, in terms of uh, the groundwater contamination and uh, vapor intrusion risk. So we're taking that data and looking for whatever remaining gaps remain and using that data to then develop these remedial investigations and feasibility studies. <clears throat> Once the uh, remedial investigation and feasibility studies are completed, there will be a proposed plan that's released, and we will request public comment on those plans so that we can understand how the community feels about the proposed alternatives. Once that, those, uh, once that input has been um, gathered, we can issue a, a rod amendment or a, a, yeah, so it's an amendment to the original uh, record of decision which allows us to implement a new remedy. Um, next slide, please. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Laura Lindy from Geoengineers to talk about Operable Unit 1. Thanks, James. Um, so I'm Laura Lindy, I'm with Geoengineers. Um, we are helping out WashDOT with um, Operable Unit 1, which is the TCE. Um, a few things we've been working on, uh, if you're, uh, a community member down in the neighborhood. Uh, you might've seen there's been some action on M Street. Uh, we just wrapped up uh, the treatment lagoon um, maintenance uh, just uh, last week, I believe. Uh, that was led by uh, Washcott Geoengineers and uh, the city of Tumwater. Uh, James mentioned that uh, groundwater sampling is done uh, twice a year uh, that's something that uh, geoengineers does, as well as um, air monitoring. Uh, so the groundwater uh, gets sampled in the spring and the fall uh, every year. And then every nine months, we collect air samples um, from the residents uh, in the neighborhood. The next round of monitoring is coming up in August. So uh, look for a door hanger. Uh, and get in touch with our contact if you'd like to participate in that. It would really help us out a lot. Uh, uh, next up, uh, between 2021 and present, uh, we've been working on uh, finishing up the
the supplemental RI for the TCE plume. Uh, and that's where we're looking at site-wide data that's been collected since the um, original rod. And hand-in-hand uh, in hand with that, we're working on developing our feasibility study uh, work plan. Uh, another element that you may have seen uh, going on down uh, on Palermo Avenue, we're working on a pilot test of a permeable reactive barrier. That's one of the uh, potential options for cleanup. And um, uh, the alternatives that we put forward uh, as far as cleaning up the TCE uh, later on this year, uh, we'll be going uh, to EPA's National Remedy Review Board. So lots of things going on uh, regarding TCE. Uh, you can certainly reach out to me. I think, uh, uh, Julie, you may have uh, contact information for us uh, at the end of the presentation. But uh, yeah, get in touch with me or uh, anyone else on our team. And I think I'm handing it back to James. Thanks, Laura. So uh, in operable unit two, which is the PCE work and the, the operable unit two is, uh, is a fund lead portion of the site. So that means that the super fund pays for this work. Uh, so EPA is, is leading it. Um, so EPA is working with our consultant EA to further characterize the PCE uh, plume and impacts, uh, both, both from soil vapor, um, soil, and groundwater and to develop remedial alternatives. So there will be a, a supplemental remedial investigation released for the PCE plume, as well as a focused feasibility study, after which there'll be a proposed plan and a, eventually a rod amendment. Uh, some of the work that's gonna be going on to inform those decisions are soil gas probes. That work was done in May. The uh, soil gas probes were put in um, around the Southgate Mall building. And uh, they were removed actually two weeks later and now we're, we're analyzing the data that was collected there. We're also planning to install some additional monitoring wells, groundwater monitoring wells, which will help us further delineate the plume's extent and to understand where our contaminant mass is located and how it's moving across the site, which will then help us determine the best way to um, uh, develop a remedy to, to address the problem. Um, so the feasibility study is in progress. Um, we are hoping to have a proposed plan uh, later in this calendar year and to um, see a rod amendment in place in 2024. Um, next slide, please. And now I'll turn it back over to Julie to talk about the community involvement plan. Hey, Julie, I think you're muted. I need to unmute myself. <laughs> All right. Um, well, as I said at the beginning, um, you know, I'm working on updating the community involvement plan and we are looking for input from the community. Um, we want to know how folks want to get information about the cleanup and how they want to um, be involved um, because we can't really do this without you because we want to know um, you know what do how do people want to get the information how do they want to learn about it how do they want to understand it and what works best so um, one way um, folks can do that is that um, you can answer a short online survey that we have in Sur um, survey monkey um, if you you can go to the Palermo webpage, which the address is right here, um, or if you put your um, your I, your smartphone up to the screen and you can scan that QR code, that will take you to the webpage and that's where you can um, click on the link to get to the survey that way. Or if you prefer, um, you can do a phone or an in-person interview with me. Um, if you want to schedule one, um, just please feel free to email me or you can call me um, through EPA's 1-800 number and go through my extension um, 2752 um, and we can set up something 
so I can talk with you um, in person, which is a much more humane way sometimes to, to kind of have a conversation one on one. Um, you know, and it'll help me know what works best um, for you um, and others in the community of how you'd like to stay engaged on the cleanup. So if you have any questions, um, here are those of us who are in EPA, um, James, who is uh, uh, for the the one leading the cleanup um, for Palermo. Um, I am your community uh, involvement coordinator. And then Stephen uh, Lucas is on hand doing the five-year review. Um, but as I stated before, we do have, along with all of us, we have uh, Laura here as well to answer questions. And we do have our subject matter experts who are listening in and are on tap to help answer any questions that you may have about the cleanup. So at this time, we are way ahead of schedule, um, which is great, um, gives us more time to answer questions um, if you have any. So um, if you have any questions, you can write them in the chat. Um, you can raise your hand um, in Zoom um, and I can call on you and unmute you or you can unmute yourself um, to be able to answer your question. Um, so yeah, we just have this time right now available for you to um, get your questions answered. And please don't be shy. <laughs> That's why we're here tonight is to answer questions. While folks um, think of questions that they may want to ask, um, uh, Laura, Stephen, or James, is there anything else that you would like to add that um, you just thought of that you may, other things you may have wanted to say tonight? Oh, sorry, I am seeing a hand raised. Okay, sorry about that. Dan, um, go ahead. Okay, well, less of a question. I just maybe thought I'd break the ice and, and uh, ask that, that beaver you have there on that picture, is that a picture from the, uh, the, the pond that we've been recently doing some work to uh, protect some of their habitat right there at the site? I wish, but that beaver is the inspiration for, or those ponds are the inspiration for this beaver. So um, yes, I'm hoping that sometime when I'm down there in the neighborhood and near those wetlands, I would love to see one of the beavers that has set up residence there. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Well, ultimately, I just want to say thank you to the EPA, to WashDOT, to geoengineers, and all of the folks that have been involved with um, this work over the years. It's been a lot of really uh, uh, hard work, uh, a lot of a lot of digging around science, trying to figure out what's going on there to protect the the health of the residents of Tum Water and the drinking water that that we serve. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for that. And I know this is going to be an ongoing process, but uh, just really appreciative of the collaboration that we've all shared uh, to this point. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I just thought of one thing I can do. Um, I would like to pull those, and, and this is not for our subject matter experts or other staff here tonight, because I, I think I have a good idea of how you found out about the meeting tonight, <laughs> um, besides me directly inviting you. But for those of you who are from the community tonight, um, I have launched a poll. And if you can go ahead and answer um, how you found out about the meeting tonight, was it through a door hanger that we put in your neighborhood? Or was it through a neighbor? Um, Maybe some way, somehow, was it posted on fa Facebook? Did you get a flyer maybe mailed in the in, in the mail to you? Um, and some of you are saying other. And if you can just write that in the chat um, so I can uh, hear how you heard about it, that would be really great because this helps me know how, folk, how, we're, how to get the word out there. I know it's been quite some time since we've had a community meeting and um, you know, doing this tonight virtually was just kind of our foray into you know, getting active again and you know but also just learning what works for folks um you know i know during the pandemic um virtual meetings really helped folks be able to stay engaged um you know i know i just on a personal level was able to get more engaged with um different things at my um son's schools and like other um community um activities virtually that i didn't have the time with before but was able to do it now that things were at home and made it a lot easier. So it's good to know if that's um, come 
continuing. So um, I appreciate the input. It really helps. So thank you for that. I'll end the poll. And again, don't be shy about asking any questions. Um, feel free to raise your hand or you can, um, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to um, state it verbally, you can always put it um, in the chat and we can answer your question. Okay, uh, Laura, um, go ahead and unmute if you uh, want to share anything. Yeah, thanks, um, Julie. I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit more about the indoor air monitoring. Uh, I mentioned we do that every nine months. That's free for residents in the Palermo neighborhood. And um, you'll see uh, a door hanger. On your uh, on your door come probably another three or four weeks from now uh, it'll have a contact information on it for John Deeds who is our field team leader uh, feel free to give him a call or text him uh, email him uh, if you're comfortable uh, participating in the indoor air monitoring it's a little um, a little charcoal tube that uh, sits inside your living room. Uh, and then uh, it sits there for three weeks. We come back and we pick it up. Um, and then once we have the results, we'll send you a letter that describes what the results are. Uh, and uh, like I said, it's free, it's informative for us so we can learn what's going on in the neighborhood um, from a vapor intrusion perspective. Um, and then if there's uh, anything of concern, we'll uh, be in touch with you uh, on how to resolve uh, that concern. Um, any questions about the indoor air monitoring? I know we, we've been doing it for quite a while and there uh, we have uh, some people that participate um, often, and uh, some people may just be hearing about this for the first time. So um, I'm willing to uh, meet with you, walk you through it. Uh, yeah, any any questions on the air monitoring? Um, well, there is a question. I'm not doing the crawl spaces anymore. Is that accurate? Is that correct? For uh, during COVID. Um, we were not going in the crawl spaces, but since that has sort of went away, um, we'll be uh, reverting back to collecting samples in the crawl spaces too. Thank you for the question. Oh yeah. Okay, and I just changed the settings. I apologize for this. Um, that um, you folks can be able to unmute themselves now if they want to ask their questions, which I think someone did. So um, that should work. Okay. We can stay on another five minutes um, as folks think about questions. Um, well, that's weird. Okay. Um, I, okay. And I, I see you're still unmuted or muted. I am not understanding why that's happening. Um, do you want to type your question in the chat or is it too long? I'm not sure why this is muted. It should be unmuting. 
and I'm asking to mute you. Okay, what is the plan for reuse of the site, um, just in regards to sustainability, um, et cetera? So um, I'm guessing that would be the sustainability of the treatment uh, at the site, or um, which. I guess I'm just wondering which part of the site because you know so part of it's already a neighborhood and then we have the shopping center it's like for the businesses and parks to use it. Okay. Um James, would you want to address that? Um James, you're muted if you're trying to answer. Yeah, I can I can answer that. So okay. so so you know, we always look at sustainability as part of the um, alternative analysis. Uh, it's part of the, the um, criteria we look at when, when determining how to implement a alternative. In terms of site reuse, the site is currently, um, you know, light commercial industrial up on top and a residential neighborhood down below. So as of now, there, there are no, um, the, the restrictions that would be placed would be in regards to um, drinking water wells or installation of new wells for um, personal use. And once the site reaches um, an, uh, a level where it can be, when those institutional controls can be lifted, then, then they will be, um, if, it, if it can reach that, that level. Um, that's our goal. But as of right now, I don't know that there's any um, reuse issues. When we have new development come on site, uh, for example, the I Center that was built, uh, we do um, try and have uh, vapor barriers put into those buildings so that we can help to um, keep there from being any vapor intrusion risk. Um, but I'm not sure that I can answer a question on reuse more than that. Than, than what it is now. Mostly because our contaminant is groundwater, so we're not um, we're not intending to do any major um, restrictions, I guess. Okay, um, I've opened up the chat where everybody should be able to see questions that are being asked now. Um, and uh, there's a question of how long do you think this site will be completely cleaned up? That's a difficult question to answer um, with any certainty uh, due to the nature of groundwater contamination. Um, we currently believe we've identified the primary sources of the releases. However, we are not seeing sustained degradation in the aquifer, which is one of the reasons why we're reevaluating some of the alternatives. The hope is to clean it up in a timely manner. However, we've seen across the country at chlorinated groundwater sites like these, it can take um, quite a while to address the um, contaminants down to MCLs or other um, identified remedial goals. Thank you for that. I also um, put in uh, Laura's contact information, her email address. I'll also put in uh, her phone number just in case anybody wants to um, give her a call with any questions or about the upcoming sampling. And it's just taking me a minute to type. Okay, any other questions? Okay, um, 
There's a question, has indoor air quality been problematic for the homes that have done monitoring? James or Laura, do you wanna answer that or? Go ahead, James. Um, I, maybe it's not unmuting. I can, I don't understand why the mute's not. Okay, I, yeah. oh, I'm unmuting now. Okay. I actually think <laughs> that, that uh, perhaps the most appropriate person to answer that question might be Elizabeth L. Okay. And Elizabeth, if you are answering it, we can't hear you. So you no, I just okay. you just now took me off. Got it. Okay. Um, over the, in the years that I have worked on the site, and I can't keep track of how many it's been, I think we have uh, found indoor air concentrations of TCE in the neighborhood at one home that was uh, what we would call a level of concern. And, asked maybe if we could take action to to try and stop it um, um, and there was no no indication that the tce came from that was detected at home came from a source inside the home it seemed to be coming from the groundwater um, the occupant of that house uh, declined our request to put in any kind of mitigation member or uh, mitigation measures but they have also graciously agreed to let us continue to sample the home. And um, other than that one in detection, I don't remember us um, seeing one that's been a concern. Um, and I don't know if folks have seen in the chat that um, the feedback the neighborhood has received on monitoring the results is no. Some level of vaporization into living spaces along Rainier. So. Well, that also brings, I, maybe, maybe I misunderstood the question because Deb was referring to okay. outdoor air within the neighborhood and I was focusing on mm. um, air inside the living spaces. And, and Deborah's an answer is correct for outdoor air. And my answer was correct for indoor air. So maybe if yeah. we combine the two, we've covered everything. Yeah, yeah. No, the original question was about indoor air quality, but I appreciate, Deb, you know, that you were adding on about that. So, and you were clarifying, yeah, Rainier being at the foot of the hill. Okay. Okay, uh, any other questions that folks might have? If you'd like to unmute or type it in the chat. Well, I know we had scheduled this to go to 7.30, um, but uh, obviously, we have gotten through the information much more quickly than that. Um, and uh, we are just shortly after um, 45 minutes or we're coming up on seven o'clock. So um, I don't know if uh, anyone wants to come on video, um, James um, or Laura or Stephen, but I would say unless we have any other questions, um, we could wrap this up and folks can have more of their evening back um, from this meeting. Um, but please know, and I can go back um, in the slides, um, with the contact information um, for uh, 
James, myself, and Stephen, if you have any questions about the cleanup, community engagement, or the five-year review, um, we're available to answer any questions. And I did put in the chat um, Laura's phone number and her um, email information if you have any questions about the sampling that will be happening. So, um, James, any final words? Yeah, I'd just like to really thank everybody for coming to the meeting tonight and uh, to all of our uh, our experts uh, who are able to also join us and, and provide support. Um, we are looking forward to uh, moving the site towards uh, cleanup and uh, just, uh, again, really appreciate everybody joining tonight. Definitely. It's a beautiful summer night, or at least um, where I sit in Seattle, I'm assuming it is down in Palermo in some water as well. Um, so yeah, I too appreciate just everyone taking the time to come to the meeting tonight, um, especially on a lovely summer evening. So um, more to come folks and we'll keep you updated and thank you so much for attending tonight. Um, again, um, we have recorded this meeting tonight. So if you have any neighbors who are curious about this, just let them know that they can look at the Palermo webpage that EPA has for the cleanup and um, the recording will be linked there in within the week. So um, just stand by and it'll be there. But thank you, everyone, and have a lovely evening. And thank you for your continued interest about the Palermo cleanup. Have a good night. Thank you.